should pollen from a female producing nanners be used for breeding? So the bananas, the the male stamen that comes out. It depends on how the, the nanners were created. So if we have purposely stressed the female um, to create nanners in a sense of like light stress or heat stress, that's not. And, and then we we bring that that hermaphrodite hermaphroditic trait. Uh, out to the forefront then it was dominant in the first place right so we don't want to use that for breeding stock now in the sense where nanners were created by the female herself in that last ditch effort to you know self-pollinate and um, preserve her own genetics in that sense she wasn't uh that that most likely that hermaphroditic trait wasn't dominant in her she did it herself at, you know, at towards the end, thinking like, oh, you know, this is the end of my life cycle. I got to pollinate. I haven't been pollinated. Got to pollinate. So in that sense, it's really good because technically that's a self-pollination, which uh, the offspring uh, of every self-pollination are going to be 50% more stable. And um, so that's why I say it gets tricky when we use the term hermaphrodite or hermy. Uh, it's really important in knowing how it was developed and you know, we've got two different type of Hermes, technically. We have um, ball sex, which um, which typically come from us reversing a female, whether we're using colloidal silver or uh, gibberellic acid or, or whatever method you're using, we're then stopping the product, the, the, the production of ethylene and, and causing the female to then create male parts. So in that case, that's also not, uh, the, the hermaphroditic trait most likely is not dominant in that case. Uh, it's most likely recessive and, um, uh, you know, depending on, you know, it, it could be either way, but, you know, uh, you would know if, if, you know, in that case, because we wouldn't use it in the first place. But in that case, yeah, it's most likely not dominant. It would be dominant in a case where we use stress to create nanners. Yeah, that's that's not good. We don't want to use that as breeding stock. Okay, we'll get deeper into feminizing in a little bit here. I want to stick on her hermaphrodites for one uh, few more questions here. So, should pollen from pollen sacs coming from a hermaphrodite? So, the hermaphrodite I'm talking about is say the plant grows, flip it over to flower, starts growing pistils. Shortly after, you see pollen sacs there. Should that be used for breeding? No. So, that is what we're talking about in the case of a natural herm. Yep. Okay. That's that's more of a natural herm where that where that trait is dominant in that in that so that that's going to also pass off that dominant trait to the offspring, uh, and many of those uh, offspring are going to have or, or, or just like you you said going to flower and produce pollen sacs. This clip is brought to you by AC Infinity. Use discount code Mister Grow at fifteen to save on any of their products. Thank mm-hmm. you.